Hey guys, Mead Ruddles, Chris Tomer here on this Friday with this mountain weather update, and it's another powder day up in the Tetons. Look at that view up there, reporting six inches of new snow in the last 24 hours. That now puts them at 181 for the season. And I've got two more storms in my forecast. You're likely going to get close to 200 here. Uh, make that run at 200 inches here very, very quickly. Down the road, crystal clear. Look at that sunrise at uh, Alta Ski Area, Mount Baldy. So you're waiting, but you've got a storm coming late tonight throughout the day tomorrow. So tomorrow, heavy snow accumulation overnight into tomorrow. So tomorrow's a powder day. Tomorrow's a powder day for the Tetons. Tomorrow's going to be a powder day for the central and northern mountains of Colorado as well. Um, so we'll look at all that in the forecast. In fact, here's what's coming on radar. You can see it. Uh, moving on shore right now with heavy rain and snow. Oregon, Washington, Northern California, and through the interior, just a little bit of leftover snow. That orographic flow continues to just hammer the Tetons. I mean, what a period this has been. Um, after a slow start to the season, man, we, we're looking good up there now. Um, but you've got a storm coming. The storm across the West Coast will displace all this, reset the flow as that comes in late tonight, tomorrow, and probably on 1-5. Um, as well. Okay, you can see it here, Northern California, um, snow over uh, probably Shasta, I'm betting. But eventually, the point here is that it's going to develop over the top of Tahoe as the day wears on. And we will see some moderate accumulations through Tahoe at the higher elevations. So that's what's coming, uh, Lake Tahoe. In the northeast, much colder air mass, seeing wraparound snows, and also lots of lake effect. <laughs> Look at all these plumes coming off these relatively warmer lakes. Uh, so some places are getting nailed, especially up there just north of Syracuse. Um, let me just set the table. So this is water vapor satellite imagery at lower levels. So oranges and reds are your drier air. The moisture aloft is going to be in the whites and the blues. There's the storm I just showed you on radar. So eventually that moves in, brings snow to uh, a lot of Idaho, Montana, the Tetons, the Wasatch, the High Uintas, and the central and northern mountains of Colorado between late tonight, tomorrow, and 1-5. So that is what's coming. And there's another storm behind it for 1-6-1-7. So two storms lined up, and that will follow a similar track. Okay, let me show you my bullet points just very quickly. So there's our storm. Next one, 1-4-1-5, one, one, plus wind. It's going to be a lot of wind, and I'll drill down on that with Alta, and I'll show you the wind there in a second. Coming. Smaller storm, 1-6-1-7 one, one, in the northeast. We covered that residual snow and lake effect and four Arctic air mass surges through 116. Midwest, Great Lakes, Northeast, Deep South. It's going to be a pretty cold period, guys. Um, I'm sure you've heard that advertised. Uh, let me show you. Let me just bring you up to speed. Season to date snow totals. You can see the resorts listed at the bottom. I just put this together this morning. Uh, Timberline's up there at 254. Bachelor's up there. Baker's up there. But also look at Revelstoke, Interior PC right up near the top of the list at 230 inches so far this season really good start to the season for revel stoke there's jackson hole 181 again making a run of 200 here very soon altas at 163 i also wanted to mention j peak j peak is sitting sitting good sitting pretty right with all the other western resorts and j peaks in extreme northern vermont so it's a northeast ski area and it's at 151 inches this last storm, yeah, it just nailed that area with like a, over a foot of accumulation. You've still got some coming. Um, down the list, snow mass at 130. Um, you, and you can always check out some of these totals if you were to look at, uh, you subscribe to aspenweather.net. Um, Corey and Ryan do an excellent job with uh, that app and, and these totals. Um, that's where I get them from. So Mammoth at um, about 100. Wolf Creek's at about 100. And let's see, everybody else trying to chase the century mark down there. Steamboat, Mammoth, or, um, yeah, Mammoth. Is that Mammoth? Monarch. Monarch and Park City trying to get to 100 inches. Okay, now let's drill down to Alta, Utah. This is the forecast mediagram for exactly 9,000 feet. So I showed you the live cam. It's crystal clear there right now. Today looks mainly dry and mild with high temps up there at 9,000 at about 33 degrees. Not much wind. But the wind increases overnight tonight with the snow production starting. And it snows most of the day tomorrow with winds of probably 50 mile an hour wind gusts most of the day up there at 9,000 feet. It's going to be windy and snowy. And this forecast model cranks out about a foot of snow out of this next storm system for Solitude, Brighton, Alta, Snowbird. And there's another storm which you don't see here. 
between 1.6 and 1.7. So that's what's coming. Alta Snowbird. Solitude Brighton. All right, let's jump into Colorado. Here's Vail Pass. This is the time height forecast. Now, what I'm looking for here is the green. That's going to be your humidity that's increasing. This is a really powerful product for helping to identify orographic snowfall. And you can see it coming here. This is, again, for Vail Pass. So moisture increases, 72-hour forecast. I'm looking at it from right to left as you're looking at this. This is through all the vertical layers. So the green increases on the 4th. And it becomes, uh, and, and it really hits its max by the afternoon, evening of the 4th, and throughout the 5th. This suggests to me that we're going to see a shrouding effect, where the snow starts on the 4th and continues through a lot of the day on the 5th, just kind of hanging on over the high peaks of the I-70 corridor, the Front Range High Peaks, and a lot of Summit County, the Gore Range, Northern Colorado. So that's what's coming. Um, my the forecast from that model for Vail Pass cranks out about six, seven, eight inches of snow um, between late on the 4th, afternoon, evening of the 4th, and throughout the day on the 5th. And keep in mind, it'll probably hang on through much of the 5th uh, with that type of west-northwest flow pattern. Looking at the jet stream forecast. So this is the jet stream forecast. And what I'm looking for here, and I'm going to start it early this morning. This is about 5 a.m. this morning. A little bit of ridging, you can see that. A little bit of arcing to the north of these of these uh, uh, of the jet here for Colorado and Utah. So it has dried out. But what I'm looking for is this. I want to see the reds, the pinks, and then those tan colors. Those represent the higher winds at jet stream level and this guide storm systems. And watch as I advance this. You can see the next storm coming. So this is late today. Trough of low pressure hitting Northern California, Oregon, Washington, starting to get kicked out and eject into the uh, into the Intermountain West. So early on Saturday, early tomorrow morning, the low is approaching Utah. Uh, the trough of, of, of the actual uh, low, Idaho, Montana, Utah, and eventually Colorado, Wyoming. Here it comes. Here is late on Saturday, and the, the actual trough of low pressure sliding out of Utah, through Wyoming, Colorado, and it probably lasts into the 5th in Colorado with wraparound snow because the trough is still here early morning hours of Sunday on the 5th, and then it eventually moves away. Now let me show you the next storm system. Here it comes. This is the 6-7 storm. This is early on the 6th. You can see the area of low pressure in the Pacific Northwest diving down. Let me take you back to the last frame. So again, it's diving down. This is the middle of the day around lunch on Monday, January 6th. The low is going to be aiming at Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, and eventually Colorado as the 6th wears on. That would be a 1617 storm system. Okay, let me show you my official forecast. So all of today through the 6th, starting the Wasatch, 8 to 15 inches, and that accounts for both storm systems. The next one coming and the one behind that. Um, the, obviously, the bigger totals are up there in Little and Big Cottonwood Canyons. At least a foot up there for the Tetons, at least a foot for Big Sky, Bridger Poles right there. The rest of Montana, 5 to 8 inches of accumulation. The central and northern mountains of Colorado get the bulk of the accumulation. I've got a little bit more out there around Aspen, Snowmass, Vail, Copper, up the Steamboat. I think that's where we're going to see a little more shrouding and potentially... A, just a little more moisture uh, between the first and the second storm systems, but still six, seven, eight inches up there over the Continental Divide, Loveland, a basin down in the Summit County, up to Wolf, up to Winter Park. Less snow accumulation down in the Southern Mountains. The snow you see in California mainly happens today. A couple of feet up there for Bachelor and Timberline, about a foot through Whistler, Blackcomb. Baker, Rainier, and Stevens, and only light accumulations in my forecast for interior BC, and I don't have anything as you drop down in the BAM sunshine, unfortunately. Okay, let's go to the northeast. Again, some uh, some lake effect today and wraparound snows. Uh, I don't have a whole lot here. One, two, three, four inches of accumulation will probably do it through New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. And again, that's all of today through the 6th. So we'll end on the western map. You can see where the bullseyes are. We're going to have uh, a powder day today for the Tetons, a powder day tomorrow for uh, the Wasatch, the central and northern mountains of Colorado. Um, and you can see the other big bullseyes, parts of Montana, 
Idaho, and the Pacific Northwest. Guys, thanks for tuning in here to this update. I always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.